Okay, in this video we're going to um, animate or keyframe uh, the joints along this cube to make it uh, bend and warp and do things uh, along the timeline. So I'm starting with the original cube that had been um, rigged or skinned, um, not the one where we went into the weighting and changed the weights around because I want to keep this nice and smooth. So this is the very first rendition of this. So let's uh, set up our render timeline here. Um, I'm going to change my render settings to 30 frames per second and I'm going to have 300 frames along the timeline so it's a 10 second animation. So we can go down here to where the little drop down list is and let's change this to 30 frames per second. You'll see that the uh, timeline now starts taking decimals. Just reduce that. Just go back into here and change 1, 1. Uh, we'll put a total of 300 and let's go ahead and see the entire amount here. I'll move my playhead so that it's right on a 1 and not a 1.25 or something weird like that. So um, so let's start off <coughs> um, with a simple, uh, we'll make it like a banner type of animation. So we'll keep the first um, one here and let's um, let's first animate that and we'll try to make this a loop so once it gets from 1 to 300 it'll loop back so I'm gonna go ahead and select the first one and I'll hit S on the keyframe on the, on the keyboard to keyframe that in and let's go out every second so I'm gonna go out 30 frames and I'm gonna move that up just slightly keyframe it there. I'm going to come back down. Frame 60 is going to be rotated back to the original and I'm going to go ahead and make it exact. So I'm going to go to rotate Z and type in exactly 0 and then on frame 60 hit S. I'm going to go out 30 more frames and go down. Not in a specific amount here but something that makes sense. And then I'm going to come back to frame 30 and go back to zero. So you can see what I'm doing here. Um, I'm making each keyframe um, or each half rotation um, 30 frames. So it's taking about two seconds to go from the top part of the movement to the lowest part of the movement. One second to go in between each one of those. So let's continue. Um, I'm going to keyframe that in. And let's scrub it real quick to see what that looks like. You can see it starts at zero, goes up, comes back down, comes back up. So that's basically one full um, cycle right there. Um, which means we need uh, two full cycles, would be 240. Um, and then add another 120 to that. And we're looking at 360 frames. So let's go ahead and throw this in at 360 frames so that we can get three full cycles here. And what we could do, since that's one cycle, is let's shift, hold shift, and then left click and drag through those first five keyframes and let's right click on there, hit copy, and I'm going to go to the next frame, which would be 30 frames out at 150, so right click and hit paste and paste. So now we can see that it starts at frame one, goes through a full cycle, goes back. Actually I forgot that these two are in there. So let's do this. Let's undo that that copy paste. It's not gonna let me do it, so let's uh let's do this. Hold Here's another technique. I'm going to move my cursor. I'm going to get rid of this cursor here, or this keyframe. So move my cursor up there. I'm going to use this button here. It says move back to the next keyframe. So I know it's exactly on there. I'm going to right click on it. Hold on a second. This one here. Go to delete, and then I'm going to reselect these, this group, 
and I'm going to use these two arrows in the middle to move it so that that first keyframe is right on the 150 mark. Okay, that should do it. So now you know a few more tools for moving and deleting and copying and pasting your keyframes around. So let's double check it just by scrubbing to make sure that, yeah, that worked. Alright, so what I'm going to do is select this group again, right click, copy them, go back from 240, go out 30 frames, which would be 270, and we'll paste and paste. And that should put us right at the end here. Let's see what that looks like. So it starts, goes up, down, and then up, which that means this will end right at the very end here um, and go right back into the middle. Let's do a quick uh, save and let's uh, see what that looks like when we play the uh, timeline here. And see what it, see if there's any skip when it comes just slightly, but I think that's more to do with the RAM. So we've got ourselves a little movement here. Um, let's go ahead and, f and finish off the rest of these. So that means um, we can animate this. I'm going to keyframe it right where it is. Let's just go half. Otherwise, I'm not going to keyframe every single one of these joints, but let's do half of it. So I'm going to keyframe that right there. We're going to go out 30. I'm going to bend it downward so it appears to be kind of lagging behind. And then at 60, I'm going to bring it up. See what that looks like. Up. And then we'll come back at frame 90. I believe it should still be falling behind a bit until 120 when it comes up. That's when we'll let this flop. <laughs> All right, see what that looks like. So I'll scrub it, it goes up, flaps back down. So you can see it's lagging behind. All right, so we can take these. Let's copy them. Same thing we did before, we'll paste them in place and do it again over here at 270. Let's see what that looks like. Up, down, <laughs> and it ends there. We need to extend it a little bit further out to allow this to come back up. But that's how you get it. That's how we can move these around and animate the different keyframes. So you can see that that joint has keyframes on it, and the first joint have keyframes. The others do not. But we could do, we could keep going if you wanted to. Um, let's just do this last one here just to see what it would look like. So I'm going to keyframe that at frame one. Go out 30. Let's allow this to bend just a little bit more. And this one will be lagging behind even more from the one ahead of it. Okay, so now you can see kind of what we're after with this. <laughs> All right, so that's how you go through the process of animating your joints. Now, obviously, um, this is a very simple thing, um, and I just want to show you how to keyframe those things into place without going into too much detail and taking a whole lot of time. But you would basically go through and do the same thing for each of these joints until you get the look and feel of the movement that you're after. So. So that should be enough information there to get you started on any types of animation um, um, using your joints and the, uh, the mesh.